people of the same ethnic group have the same political views. That was clearly a satirical statement. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about something that I have been thinking about ever since Friday. I am talking about book lists, and you may be wondering why have you been thinking about a list of books since Friday? Let me explain what I mean. Ever since the murder of George Floyd, people have been posting a ton of resources online. Among these resources are lists of books, songs, movies, podcasts, and poems by people of color. And they post these online and say, here, go educate yourself. Books. And then people are like, oh, okay, I guess I'll read one of these books. That is what I am going to talk about today. Tricky subject. Inherently, there is nothing wrong with making a list of books and posting it online. It's a list of books of recommendations that you want people to read so that they can be more knowledgeable on a subject that they might not know that much about. However, I have a warning for all of you. That's actually what this video is. This video serves as a warning to anybody who is observing these lists of books and desires to read them and they're wondering which one they should read. The short answer is, read any of them. The long answer is, read any of them and read all of them. This is why. By posting a list of book recommendations online, obviously you're going to prompt people to pick a book from there and read it. It is dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Well, you might get some people who will read one book, they will say, for example, they will read James Baldwin's Go Tell It on the Mountain, and they will now think that they know everything that there is to know about the issues that black people face within our society. This child, his name is John, whose stepfather is a minister in their church. However, this minister, this stepfather, also beats John and his mother so it kind of deals with that clash of oh well you're supposed to be a christian yet you're beating your wife and her son if one were to read this book in an attempt to understand race issues within the united states they would come away with the conclusion that religion plays a strong and sometimes detrimental role within the black community okay they can take whatever they want from this book if they read ta Coates' Between the World and Me, they might have a similar idea. He's not really big on religion, and he doesn't think it's a big deal for people of color. However, if they were to read any other book that has a contrary opinion, that would obviously undermine whatever they had led to believe was true in these two books. Frederick Douglass, for example, had said he had a master whose wife was very kind to him and didn't treat him like a slave. However, another author might have a completely different view of this. They would say that the slave master, just because by nature of being a slave master, is already being unkind to his slaves because he is keeping them in slavery. Because he is still keeping them as slaves, he is inherently unkind. Frederick Douglass, in his book, says that I am strongly tempted to give the names of two or three of these little boys as a testimonial of the gratitude and affection that I bear them. So he talks about gratitude and affection towards these people. ta Coates says, I knew that Prince was not killed by a single officer so much as he was murdered by his country and all the fears that have marked it from birth. And then he says, the killer was the direct expression of all his country's beliefs. So you can see that these two have very different views on white people, on the United States of America, and basically a ton of other things in general. They have very different views on a number of issues, as do all of these authors that I am mentioning. They don't see eye to eye on every issue. They might not see eye to eye on any issue. and. That is the point, that is what I'm trying to talk about. I am asking you not to homogenize these authors. 
I'm asking you to not place them all into one category and think, okay, now if I read one, that'll be basically enough because they all will be saying the same thing. This book takes place in Africa. This book is about European colonialism within Africa in the 19th century. So they might deal with the same issues in a metaphorical sense, but as far as setting goes, they are not the same. And so that is why I'm asking you to not homogenize these writers, to not read one book and say, okay, I have a complete understanding of African-American issues. I am asking you to not read one book and then just tote it around and be like, woohoo, yeah, support. Wow, I'm, I'm such an ally. Wow, look at my books by authors of color. You, you're not supporting, per se, by reading a book. I read an excerpt of Mein Kampf in high school for my AP World History class that does not make me a Nazi. We've obviously all read a ton of things, but that does not make us a supporter of whatever that book is talking about. So that is why I am saying, don't read a book and say, woohoo, support, I'm, I'm, I'm a supporter, yes, patting myself on the back because I am so diverse that I read one book. No, it is always important to diversify what we read and listen to, not just when things like this happen. It is important to do it at all times so we can understand what other people's voices are, to understand what other people have to say on the matter. Politically, it's important to listen to media from both right and left sides so that you can understand the rhetoric of both sides and therefore have a deeper understanding of the issue yourself. If you only listen to voices that are like your own, you will always be limited to that perspective. You will fail to see the flaws that exist in your own perspective and you won't be able to grow. It means that I am capable of examining my own views and checking to see if I have considered all aspects of the issue when I have these views, checking to see if there's something that I overlooked. And that, I think, is the most important message that I have for you today. When you read these books, know that if they're not the whole story. They present one perspective on the issues that African Americans face within our country, but they do not represent all of it. In order to understand, obviously, a more broad or diverse perspective, you would have to read more than one book by a person of color. And maybe that is what these lists are for. These lists are so that you can have access to various voices, various perspectives instead of just one. Don't only challenge your ideas. Challenge the ideas of these same authors that you are reading, these same books that you have, because if they're not all the same, it's up to you to decide what you agree or disagree with. It's up to you to decide what you think is the best way to understand the issues that they're talking about, the best way to support people of color within this nation, to support your neighbor and your fellow man. So that is why I ask you to, if you're looking at these lists, don't just pick the first one that you see at the top of them. Don't pick the shortest one. Try to incorporate a variety of views into your up to into your reading list into your watch list into your listen list just make sure that you're hearing more than one thing all the time thank you for watching this video and don't forget to like comment and subscribe bye